Marcus is a shill for the Mercers. Let's just be honest. So people say, why do you pay so much attention to Marcus? I said, I don't pay attention to Marcus. I pay, pay attention to the freaking Mercers. They're billionaires. You do not, you do not, uh, you know, discount them. They are badass mofos. So they will fund a thousand Marcuses if they want Marcus to. Marcus Conti reporting. You know, there's, there's people that watch cows out in the field and cows are very smart. And sometimes they jump when they, when they, when they come to a conclusion, right? They, they're out in the field and, and they, and they figure it out and they go, Oh, and they jump for joy. And they're fucking, you see the cow jump. And you're like, what's, what's the cow thinking? Holy shit, fucking cow just figured it out. So I think I figured something out. I want to share this uh, very important stuff with you without <clears throat> taking up too much of your very precious time. But <clears throat> let's take a stroll down memory lane. This is, uh, I'm going to cover the Jenny Moore uh, murder mystery, death mystery, whatever, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to call into question a bunch of uh, interviews that I've gathered from George's brother, from Farmer Jones, all these characters surrounding Jen Moore. I'm going to talk about some of the other characters in this play, school play, this this uh, uh, murder mystery, this love triangle, whatever it is. And I'm, I think I've come to the I think I broke break broke ground uh, today, but I want to talk about. So I'm going to talk about a lot of stuff. We're going to watch a lot of videos. So so buckle up. This is this is going to be kind of interesting, and it's it's actually uh, I'm going to I think coin a genre uh, of what we're doing here on YouTube, right? At least certainly not I'm doing, but there are people among us that are doing it. The storytellers, right? So I want to talk about uh, Pulp Fiction. Right? Not the movie. Remember, remember Pulp Fiction? And I want to talk about the... I want to bring us back to the day after Jenny Moore died and how the report broke and how the fiction started. Right. So what is Pulp Fiction? Right. The term originated from the magazines of the first half of the 20th century, which were printed on cheap pulp paper and published fantastic escapist fiction for the general entertainment of the masses. The Pulp Fiction era provided a breeding ground for creative talent which would influence all forms of entertainment for decades to come. The hard-boiled detective and science fiction genres were created by the freedom that Pulp Fiction magazines were provided. Now, we don't have Pulp Fiction anymore. We don't have Pulp magazines anymore, but we have YouTube, right? Watch the, watch the connection. Although the pages in between the covers were a dingy, cheap quality, the covers were beautifully decorated, many times with lewd portraits of pretty women in various stages of trouble and handsome men attempting to rescue them. Right? The low price of the pulp magazine, coupled with the skyrocketing literacy rates, all contributed to the success of this medium. Pulp Pulps allowed its readers to experience people, places, and actions they normally would not have access to. <clears throat> Just like YouTube. Bigger than life heroes, pretty girls, exotic places, strange and mysterious villains all stalked the pages of the many issues available to the public on the magazine stands. And without television widely available, much of the free time of working literate the working literate class was spent pouring through the pages of pulp. So we don't have that anymore, but damn, do we have YouTube? Well, listen, I'm in shock. George called me a little while ago before he went live to ask me when's the last time I spoke to Task Force. I said a couple of weeks, but I texted with her last week. I sent her a text on Friday and didn't get a response. In fact, I mentioned that to somebody the other day. I haven't heard from her in two weeks. So I'm in shock, according to what George is telling us, Task Force is dead. This is terrible and very sad. But, where's George? I told him, where is she? Oh, he's at the hotel, she's at the hotel. I said, well, you ought to get your ass back there. Find out what's going on. Was there foul play? The natural causes. What the hell, man, investigate. Right? Were there injuries on the body? 
where she's shot in the head. She died qu quietly and peacefully in her sleep. I said, hey, I said, you should have your ass over there. Grab JK and go. No, he's there sitting with JK out at the uh, restaurant talking about task force. That's great. So I said, go see the body. He's going to wait for the coroner's report, the autopsy. And when will that be? Two weeks? Hmm. Was there fentanyl involved? Was she strangled? Was she stabbed? Or did she just die quietly in her sleep? I mean, what the hell? Are there bruises? There's lots of questions. If I was there, I'd be at the room. If they had a yellow little police tape, I'd be right there saying, hey, how long has she been dead? All right? What's your guess? What's the cause of death? Any signs of injuries? I talk to the medics. I talk to the cops. I talk to the coroners. I talk to the techs. Find out. Front row stuff. Not, we'll wait for the autopsy. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Maybe he's afraid they'll accuse him. This particular Pulp Fiction, I'm calling it that, right? Now, am I minimizing the death of Jen Moore? No, not at all. She's dead. And there was a cause of that death, right? Because if you look at the definition of the Pulp Fiction, right, Pulp Fiction combined sci-fi and and uh, other forms of fiction. Let's see how they phrased it. Uh, a ha oh yeah, hard-boiled detective in sci-fi. But what we have now is we have more of uh, political fantasy, political uh, information combined with this kind of deep state, CIA, FBI, you know, conspiracy. Right. Right. That's what's going on right now. Right. We have that that. So it is a modern day form of pulp fiction for some for for the storytellers among us. Right. I don't consider myself self any pulp fiction storyteller. I consider myself a truth teller. There, there are those among us. I look at the news and I interpret it as I see it. But there are people that 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 fall into this spin category. And is it a bad thing? It's not a bad thing if you if you have if you know what what you're watching and you know what you're getting yourself into, right? In this case, someone has died as a result of pursuing a fiction, a brand of fiction created by a character, right? And his name is George Webb. In this scenario, he all the things seem to seem to evolve out of this individual this storyteller on youtube and it's very important because it's created it, attached to web is also other names like J jerome corsi uh uh alex jones uh uh what's his name uh, stone mr stone whatever fuck his name is right all these characters right right info wars ha uh, uh jason goodman with his his, he, he seemed to have broken away from it, but he's still very silent. And this sort of fiction has also spilled into the, what, we, what we think of as a kind of a, a breaking uh, internet uh, uh, information source. And that information source is True Pundit, where the, na where the, the man uh, Thomas Paine also, we found out his real name, Michael Moore. Right. And you see how all these characters, they want to hide their name because they're so important and they're so they're doing such important investigative work so they can't tell anybody what's going on. Shh, oh, yeah, fuck it. We're, 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 oh, yeah, we're going to, you know. We're. On August 14th, 2018, right? Where did this, why is this story important? Because it involves the raping of a boy that allegedly was raped by Bill Clinton. So here's the article that started the whole mess. Right? Thomas Paine, pay attention. I also, just as a, as a disclaimer, I have reached out to Thomas Paine uh, for an interview, and he has thus far declined. So August 14, 2018, investigative journalist found dead in D.C. hotel room weeks after reporting Bill Clinton to FBI and DHS for allegedly raping a boy, right? So this is the article that sparked the whole interest in the Jen Moore death, right? 
right? Nothing else. Investigative journalist Jen Moore was found dead in a suburban Washington, D.C. hotel room Monday, according to police, and shocked and dis- shocked friends and colleagues. Moore died of an apparent seizure. Police are closely investigating the cause of death in Prince George's County, Maryland. Preliminary reports from police said that death was not the result of suicide. Moore's body was found by employees uh, at the Country Inn and Suites by Radisson, Washington, D.C. East in Capitol Heights, Maryland. The investigation is ongoing. An autopsy has been scheduled as of late Monday. We have the autopsy. <clears throat> Moore, an advocate who investigated abuse and trafficked children, had been in the process of investigating allegations by a 26-year-old man that as a young boy, he was sexually assaulted by Bill Clinton and pimped out at private sex parties attended by other D.C. elites. Now, that's a hell of an accusation to make about the fucking ex-president of, of the United States. Now, is it true? I don't know. It comes from one boy. Let's continue. In fact, just four weeks before the death, more filed details of the allegations of the alleged victim's claim with the Department of Homeland Security. Uh, Moore contacted Homeland Security on July 6th through July 9th, records show. A week later, she contacted the FBI with identical details. FBI sources report no case has been opened on the evidence supplied by Moore. Homeland Security officials could not be reached for comment. So both agencies that they reached out to, nada. Moore had approached Tom, uh, true pundits Thomas Paine in June with the allegations against Clinton. Paine conducted a series of face-to-face interviews with Moore and the alleged victim in various locales. By July, the victim agreed to tell his story to Paine, but Moore and the traumatized victim wanted to contact Homeland Security and the FBI first to see if they could open a criminal case against Clinton. Payne and True Pundin were vetting the details provided by the victim. Payne said the allegations were credible and the victim's testimony and details were beyond convincing. Okay, Thomas Payne, come forward and show us goddamn video and tell us about how convincing and why it was convincing. Because you're, you're becoming the final, the final breaking point in this. What did George Webb tell you? Fucking guys. According to interviews, the victim in the case, in this case, claimed he was sexually assaulted by Clinton on a yacht in New England and knows the identity of several other children victims who were subject to identical abuses. The victim also confirmed he witnessed other children and people being sexually and physically abused and possibly worse. Apparently, according to Thomas Paine, he's the only living person who has seen or talked to the boy Right, right. George Webb claims to have seen and talked to the boy, but George Webb is not credible whatsoever. So, so here we have, we have, we have a fiction, we have a story of a boy, right, and who, who allegedly claims he was raped by Bill Clinton. We have never seen the boy. We have never talked to the boy. We have never seen the video. Thomas Paine has never spoke about this openly refuses interviews to talk about it right but we do have other people that have talked about it right i i want to say first that what you what i just told you is the conspiracy theory surrounding the death of jen moore right but what i haven't told you is is the the uh coincidence of and I'll say it openly, and, and you know, I don't care if you dislike me or not, but my observation is that George Webb is surrounded by these, these you know, 50-something-year-old, 40-something-year-old codependent women. You know, they're, they're, they, they flock to George, and George either takes their money or gives them, gives them the, the attention. He, he may have sex with them, and he's, you know, he's like the guru. Right? He can do no wrong. Did George Webb beat the shit out of Jenny Moore? Right? Is he capable of right? Because Jen Moore was found to have defensive wounds, right? 
right? And you're gonna hear you're gonna hear these people once they discover the autopsy. See, they're all waiting on the autopsy, and once the autopsy comes in, you have Webb getting into their ear, and you have the spin machine, the magical, mystical George Webb spinning. So, George, you openly admitted this in several videos um, that you had that little scuffle with Sue. Remember Sue? Sue was a very frail, fragile, submissive woman. She was kind of a tree hugger, kind of a, um, I don't know, you know, Mother Earth type person, mama nature, nature mama, whatever. And so, lo and behold, I get a call from George, I don't know, like seven years later, six years later, where uh, George is in jail because uh, he had a scuffle with Earth Mama, Sue. And, you know, I hadn't really thought about it, but um, as I remember, some of the wounds were very similar to uh, somebody else we know that George may have had a scuffle with. Uh, let's get back to the Pied Piper. Pied Piper. So, George, uh, have you cleverly washed all that up and uh, kind of camouflaged all that, that scuffle? Because I believe you were arrested, weren't you? And you spent some time in jail. Public record, you've talked about it on several videos. Those videos, I think, are fading away. But it just seems like uh, if somebody would get that violent with uh, Nature Mama, kind of wondering what Task Force might have said. I mean, she was... Oh, I didn't mean to say Task Force. I meant to say uh, one of George's researchers. But, you know, scuffles are scuffles. You never know about scuffles. Scuffles can be, uh, you know, scuffles, scuffles. Is George a bullshit artist, right? See, I have personal <laughs> experience with George bullshitting. So let, let's play this, right? So this is George bullshitting about me, right? Right. These are stories that he tells, and then I'll debunk them in a second. I already did this in another video. If you're just joining us, there's a 15-minute uh, Imran One interview coming up at 2.30. Marcus Conte is going to do that. I don't know. Uh, but is it tied to the Mercer that was working with uh, Mercer Investments that was working with Steve Bannon? I don't know. Um, it seems like he has some kind of connections at the state. Also, He's talking about me. With Marcus Conte interviewing him on a one. We don't need a 15 minute interview. We know, I think we know Marcus works at Mercer Way, which is 1166 Avenue of Americas or Fifth Avenue in New York. False. Don't know what they do. It sounds kind of like uh, insurance brokerage, like agency. He also works for this company called Leading Way. Uh, totally false. In, uh, Los Angeles area, I think. And Leading Way. I've never been to Los that, Angeles. Uh, does payday loans type of thing. Um, you know, if you're short on cash, same sort of thing probably as Law Cash did, that, that Shields guy did, loan money in order to get you through a, a tough spot. Uh, he also seems to be somehow connected to Stanford University um, in the biology department. I'm not sure. So so there's a lot of lies in there, right? He's he's saying that, that I, I work for this payday loan organization. All lies so far. He has, a, he has not had a single hit. And it's important because this is where the information is coming from, right? The guy is, and then he goes, he goes like, for example, the, the interview on when he ambushed me on the Lift the Veil, you hear him, you hear him come in with, with, with these, with these lies and he's so innocent and he's so, he's so smart and but, but uh, like I said, when, when you're at, at the receiving end of the lies, you realize just how much bullshit it is. Now, I've had people now on the Internet saying, I'm, I'm a shill for the Mercers. I'm a shill for dark weapons. I'm a, I'm a, a cutout for Goldman Sachs. No, no. I think everybody knows Marcus Conte is the cutout for Goldman Sachs and, and the Mercers. And... Bannon knows Peter Monk. They were so they were palsy wowsy. Is he capable of of killing a killing someone, beating the shit out of a girl, and then and not telling anybody about it? Damn fucking right he is. That's his sister or or whatnot. So Marcus gets around New York. Let me roll that one back. He's from Larchmont, New York. He says I have a sister. In the biology department. I'm not sure if that's his sister. I don't or, have a sister. Or whatnot. So Marcus gets around New York. Um, I think he's from Larchmont, New York. He's also kind of got some connection to Bethesda, Maryland. Um, Never been there. There's a lot of, there's a real interesting guy who lives in the same building in Bethesda, Maryland with the, uh, uh, with the World Bank. Uh, he's 
key IMF investor what for the world. Building? So it's just, just this odd kind of, and plus he tells me he's kind of like a jet setter racing around with these different bands. So it's interesting to see how this, uh, would this materialize? It kind of sounds like a jet set insider uh, setup for the, for the uh, interview. Uh, kind of jet setting all around. He tells me he's like to be a manager for all these bands, top bands. So how does that work? Um, he knows this guy named Chris Cornell. I don't know if it's, it's, I know it's not the same guy who died last year. The famous Chris Cornell, I don't think. So he's saying that I'm, I know Chris Cornell from Soundgarden, right? That I'm the manager of Soundgarden. I have a sister in Stanford, Connecticut. I don't have a sister. I, you know, I work for a payday loan fucking, I don't know who, the Bannons and the, and the Mercers. And it's just all, it's all bullshit. The whole thing is uh, just, he's a bullshit happen. artist. I think it's going to happen. I you understand? Was not, I, I knew, knew that was born of the sports for a company called Mercer. And is it tied to the Mercer that was working with uh, Mercer Investments that was working with Steve Bannon? I don't know. Anyway, we'll see if, if uh, we'll see knows Chris uh, Foreman. This is Pulp Fiction. Oh, no, sorry. We'll see if Marcus Conte was a manager for Chris Cornell. We'll see if Leading Way is actually a payday loans a company. Remember this score, Bonnie had a second profile named Fuck this Bonnie. Days. And SVU, and I was on Union Street. I went to Brooklyn. Um, this this guy, Marcus, I, I knew I had to take the interview because I was like, I'm going to show up on the courthouse steps if you haven't seen yet uh, episode. I'm going to show up on the courthouse steps of the Supreme Court. Will George Webb show up? Yes, I did, but I was filming it. I know, I said, oh, I can see the hit job coming. I think this is SEIU. So I, I asked him to, to do an interview when I was in DC for a day, right? And he says, now, now I'm a hitman for SEIU, right? So the idea that when, when people say, well, why do you attack Webb? Because he's, he's creating these, these stupid dramas about me, somebody that's trying to, that's, that's rising, telling the truth about politics and, and, and people, places and things, right? And this guy's out there smearing me Right. And then he's so he's so innocent and like, you know, like he's like, oh, no, 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 no. Conti's Conti's a, a bad guy. It's he's a, he's a fucking bullshit artist. Total fucking bullshit artist. Now I'm a hit man, but it gets even uglier. What? From a long way away. Now, who's paying for the truck? Right. It's the only thing uh, I got to I got to figure out here. So, yeah, again, Marcus works for this company called Mercer, which is, I think, an insurance broker on 1166th Avenue. Uh, he also works. Uh, no, I'm not saying he's SEIU. I'm not saying Marcus is SEIU. But but at SEIU, would you hire somebody to go in and record the supervisor saying you got to do at least 10 tickets? I would. Because that means now all my guys are off the hook having to do 10 tickets. I can have my guys doing two or three. Not saying Marcus is SEIU. I'm just saying that the, the motivations would line up that he would be SEIU. See, the other thing about SEIU is that the Department of Sanitation that I worked for is not SEIU. It's 1182. It's not even the same union, right? So he's, he's, just, he's just making up these, these stories. This, this is also very insulting because he calls the garbage, the sanitation workers, drug runners. This is fucking... Kind of knee-jerk reactions on the other side. I think, oh my God, he's onto it. We gotta, we gotta do some shiny object real quick. I mean, this thing came up like that, Marcus. I'm thinking SEIU. I'm thinking all those guys, SEIU guys, were hanging off the back of those garbage trucks. All those SEIU guys who are half of them are DEA informants with with very prescribed routes in their wards. Let me tell you, if you ever are an SEIU dump truck guy and you go in somebody else's ward and try to sell drugs, you're going to end up in the, in the East River. Let me tell you that. So I'm not saying that's what this is, but, man, it feels like it. And it sure feels like uh, but is it tied to the Mercer that was working with so that was pretty foul right he just called the the workers at the Department of Sanitation he called them half of them are hanging off the back of garbage trucks running drugs I mean it's it's just insulting it's it's inaccurate it's it's uh it's dangerous because you know it's just it's this it's just fiction is what it is right and so so people that 
get close to this guy, you could see how how all of the lying starts to mount, right? Right? Because he's combining truth with fantasy, right? He's taking truths about people, real people, right? I'm a real person, right? I'm a real person who actually blew a whistle inside of the Department of Sanitation, right? And and I, I really live where I say I am, but this guy is just he's making up these these fictional stories that are now dangerous and have, have has resulted in the death of Jen Moore. Did he beat her up? I don't know. I want to find out. Marcus is a shill for the Mercers. Let's just be honest. So people say, why do you pay so much attention to Marcus? I said, I don't pay attention to Marcus. I pay, pay attention to the freaking Mercers. They're billionaires. You do not, you do not, uh, you know, discount them. They are badass mofos. So they will fund a thousand Marcuses if they want to. And of course, who lives on the other side of this bridge but Marcus Conte? Um, so uh, yeah, all content, uh, Marcus Conte. So I just want to say, Marcus, I'm up here visiting some family. Uh, but if you would like to uh, get together for a debate, if you could bring the Mercers, if you want to bring Renaissance Technology uh, and a team of lawyers and, and uh, venture capitalists, you're welcome. If you want to bring Bannon along with his PR team, uh, we'll debate. We'll go head to head, uh, pay to play, head to head debate uh, here high atop the Verrazano Narrows Bridge. Marcus Conte. Marcus Conti, I watched a couple of your shows. Did you get a copy of that autopsy report? I don't buy it. I spoke to George about that the other day. He said that it said she had an enlarged heart. She said, or he said, that she had uh, a pacemaker. She said, or he made the point, that there was no indication of prosthetic devices of the balls, the, the titanium balls in her spine. I'm going to call bullshit on that, my man. I spoke to her at length, privately, and that girl had those balls in there. She was in pain. I dealt with her when she was running out of her meds, and that was no bullshit, okay? And she used to complain how her legs, and she told me about the physical therapy she went through because her, her spine had to grow and stretch an inch, or a half an inch, which took a long time. And as a result of that injury, she had to go through PTSD therapy and treatment inpatient, right? We have to look at this autopsy re report because if it is completely fabricated and of a different body or person, then we don't know the cause of death, do we? Because uh, I think it's a bullshit report. That's what I think. Now, I don't know if he heard it or if they read it to him or what, but if that's the real report, no, 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 no. Did I kill her? Are you an idiot? Maybe you are an idiot. No, sir, I did not kill her. I was planning to go up and visit her a week before. Go back and watch this stuff. Did you? <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, Conti. <laughs> hey, Monty, Monty Conti. Call me a jackass. You got the wrong guy, you're the garbage man, not me. Let's see, House. Oh, we've got Marcus back. Marcus, let me tell you about House rules here, all right? We encourage debate. We encourage heated debate. You got a position? State your position, present your argument. But we will not stand for personal attacks. We will not stand for name-calling and abusive behavior. If that appears on this channel, what Farmer Jones does is weed the garden those people get weeded. So now that you know the rules, I will expect no further dialogue like your fleeting comment in the last moments of the last video. See, Jen Moore was, he, you hear Farmer Jones describe Jen Moore's addiction to painkillers. He also suggests that she was very animate about uh, telling everybody about her back and her injuries and her the bold joints in her back and how how in excruciating pain she was in. But I just want to say that Jen Moore is not innocent in this. These are signs of you know junkie junkieism. Right? I'll say it right. That's how 
junkies tell stories. Oh, they need their drug. and yeah, But then we find in the dead body that there were no rods. There were no... That what we found is just a very out of shape person with a pacemaker getting other people to, you know, co-sign her drug addiction. It's one part political reality, one part smear job on real people, right? And the other part pure fiction, almost, you know, half of it is pure fiction with the exception of certain names that he drops, you know, like Steve Bannon and, you know, <laughs> right? That's what he's doing, right? So, so the, the, the mystery rages on the final, I know that these guys are going to try to spin it. Like, oh no, Jen Moore, she was involved in so many other things. Conti, you can't just say that it was all about the Bill Clinton thing, right? Because those are people that believe and, and to, to, to show them that, that they, that they swallow the, that it's all bullshit, that they're in this idiot's web, George Webb, the idiot George Webb, right? They're in his in his delusional world of fiction, pulp fiction, is to have to admit to themselves that they they were had.